this will be the first lesson on our reactive java course why we are learning it because i want you to have a foundation in fundamental and uh, you know what um, this will help you to learn web flux later and then we're going to be learning microservices development using the spring web flux okay so let's just get started with our reactive java right now and let's just try to understand from the grassroots uh, level like what it is and how it works okay so we're going to be going um, in a step by step process and i i hope i will not make things complicated okay all right so i have created a project here called test okay and let me just set up my microphone a little bit one second yeah so in this test um, project right um I'll go to my source main Java. Okay, I have a simple class called app. Nothing here, guys. So it's just a simple class. So what I want to do right now, I just want to create a class, and I'm gonna say it as uh, let's say stream utils. Okay, just some simple utility class I want to create. Okay, perfect. So what I want over here. Let's say I have a bunch of stream, stream, uh, sorry, I have a bunch of strings, okay, a uh, stream of strings, maybe some name string. So I have a method called name string, okay, let's say name uh, stream or something like that, something like this. So this name stream will have a stream of names, okay? So what I want over here, let's say I have the stream API using the stream I'm gonna be using this op method and I will be creating a bunch of names or maybe some bunch of words okay I'm gonna say hello let's say world and let's say fun and let's say learning okay let's say there are some bunch of uh, you know words that I have maybe I can say word stream instead word stream and this is a method and i'm trying to use the stream off method and having a bunch of words over here so what this off method will return anyone what i'm trying to do over here yes i want an answer i'm not going to talk anything reactive right now so do not worry so if you have a little bit of java stream knowledge that's it no, complete stream yes I, I i will be get i'll be um, having a stream returned out of this off method. Okay, so I'm gonna be having a stream of strings. Okay, because these are some bunch of strings that I have defined. Okay, and you know this off method is going to return me a stream of t, and here the t is string, so I'm gonna get a stream of string. Okay, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and this is something that I want to return. This is a method, so I'm gonna say it's a public method, and maybe I'm gonna make my method static, okay? So that I can directly call this method word stream using this class name. All right. So now let's just go to app.java, okay? Now what I want to do, I want to iterate over the stream data that I have over here, a bunch of words that I have over here. I want to iterate over here inside this app.java class, which is my client class. It's pretty simple. I can have a hold to that method like stream utils dot what stream. And this is going to return me a bunch of stream. And how can I consume the data from the stream? Um, like if I want to print all the data, what method I can use? Anyone? For each method, simple. Using the for each method, I'll be able to, you know, consume the data that I have on the stream. And now this for each is going to be connected to this what stream. And the word stream uh, has a stream, and this stream has been set up with this data. So these are the data source. This is my data source. This is directly connected with my stream. And this, this data, I want to process it over here in my app.java, right? So using the for each method. So I can take each word from the stream pipeline, and I can print it out over here, okay? Something like this, okay? Pretty straightforward. Nothing fancy over here, and I'm sure if you're okay with Java 8, and stream, then you should be pretty much easily able to understand all this thing. Okay, if I'm gonna run this, this should work 
fine. Okay, so I have this hello world fun learning. I am sure this should not be confusing to you if you're okay with stream API. Okay. All right. So right now, <laughs> I'm sure that you guys are not sure about what is reactive stream and all that. I haven't even, you know, I have not even spoken a single word about the reactive stream. But let's just try to do something reactive right now. Okay. So what I'm what I'm trying to do over here, okay, stream, we know the stream is not a data structure. Stream is just a um, way we can process our huge amount of data. For example, this word stream is giving us a stream of strings over here. So this like this op method may be internally using some data structure to uh, store this words and then giving us this word in the pipeline like one by one, the word, words are coming and we're trying to print it out over here. Something similar I'm gonna be doing. And this time, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be doing it in a reactive way, okay? So uh, what I'm gonna do right now, without understanding anything, okay? We're gonna be going into reactive, so don't freak out. I'll be telling you every bit of the reactive, the definition and everything, the way it works, but it will take me time to introduce those things to you because I do not want to read the theoretical definition. This will not make sense if you are new to reactive, okay? And obviously this is just an introductory course to reactive stream. So I'm, I assume that uh, we have zero level of understanding, including me, and we're gonna be exploring step by step right now, okay? So right now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my Google Chrome and I will be going with uh, Maven um, repository. I'll go to this website and in my Maven repository right now, I'll be looking for an API, let's say project reactor core. Project reactor core, do we have any dependency available over here? Okay, this is a reactive API. It's a very famous reactive API using this API. We can uh, build reactive application. We don't know what it is so far, but I'm just looking for the API if I can find it. Well, non-blocking reactive foundation for the JVM. And let's just go to the latest version. Look for the group ID it should be from io.projectreactor and it's a reactor, a reactor core dependency. I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard. I'm gonna close this, um, this guy over here. I will go back to uh, my IntelliSe, go to my bomb.xml and I'm gonna add some reactive support uh, to my project right now. I'm gonna reload my project and just to be in the safer side, I'm gonna do um, the Maven install for now, okay? Just to make sure that, you know, uh, I'm able to build my project fine and looks like it's working fine, okay? So I'm sure like you might be, okay, Abilas, tell me why you have added this. For now, I just want to develop a reactive based application. Just for that, I have added this dependency. We're gonna be talk more about it, but hold on for that right now, okay? Now you forget everything. Let's, let's just concentrate in a, another, uh, you know, small util class that we'll be building right now. Okay, I'm gonna create a new Java class and I'm gonna say it's a reactive stream utils. It's not a normal stream. It's a reactive stream right now. A reactive stream I want to create, okay? For an example, I'm gonna be using um, a method name, let's say same, word, stream but this is a word stream reactive okay it's a word reactive stream or something like that so i want to right now do what i just like my stream utils i have created a stream over here just like that here in my reactive stream utils i'll create a reactive stream so like stream api i was using before to create a stream stream dot off method like that i'm going to use something called flux Again, we don't know what it is. I'm just gonna use this flux right now, okay? And I'm gonna say flux dot just, like stream dot off, and they were giving the data. Like that, we have the just method to create some reactive stream, okay? Now you can see it's a T var arcs data, so it can take multiple things over here. So again, I can uh, give some data over here, fun, learning, uh, let's say uh, selenium, Express, something like that, okay? There are some words over here, what this just method is going to return. 
is going to return a flux of t. Okay, t means what? This data. This is string. Okay, so it is going to return what? A flux. We don't we don't know what it is. Maybe a reactive way of creating a data stream, a source of data. But that's okay. We're going to be understanding and exploring what it is. But it is going to hold some string data over here. These are our words over here. Okay, and again, I'm going to make this method uh, public, and I'm going to make this method static so that I can directly call this. And this is what this method is going to return. Okay, so right now think that we are able to build some a bunch of string. Okay, uh, this 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 uh, flux does just method right now holding a bunch of string and this is something that it is going to emit whenever we're going to ask for the data, right? So now let's just go to our app dot Java over here. Right now, I want to consume those data, just like I have consumed my stream data over here. I want to consume that data. How can I consume that? Okay. It is that method is from the reactive stream utils class. Okay. What is the method name? Word stream reactive. Okay. And this is going to get me what? A stream, a stream, like a data stream, but maybe a reactive data stream. We don't understand again what is reactive. I'm just making you familiarize that word. But yeah, we're going to be getting some words over here to be very, uh, you know, uh, very specific. We're going to be getting some stream of data. Okay. We don't care like how that stream of data is coming. Let's just try to, uh, you know, get each of the data, whatever this method is returning. For an example, we just forget everything, what this method is even returning. Imagine it is returning a data stream, just like this word stream returns you a stream of data. This word stream reactive is also returning you a stream of data. Okay. Now, do I have a for each method to consume those data? No, I don't have it over here. Maybe here the architecture is a little bit different than the stream, but I do understand. So just like for each method here, I have a method called subscribe. Okay. Maybe I can think like this what stream reactive. Okay, this is a stream of data I'm getting. Maybe this is some kind of a publisher which is publishing all this data to me. Okay, and I want to get all this data from this publisher. Okay, this publisher is returned by whom? This method. Okay, so now let's just go to after Java. This method, imagine this is some kind of a publisher. I want to get all the data from this publisher. So I want to subscribe to that publisher and I want to ask for the data. Okay. So hey publisher, get me the data. So what is gonna have a consumer, just like the for each is accept a consumer. This is also going to accept a consumer. So I'm gonna say what is out what over here. Okay. Now let's just see without understanding even what is reactive programming. We have used some API and we're trying to um, you know have access to one of the uh, reactive stream and trying to access the data over here. And look at that, we're able to do so. And I'm sure. I'm uh, less than 90% sure that if you understand how this works, you can also kind of assume how this works. Okay. You may be wrong the way you assuming things right now, but you kind of, I, I'm sure that this code might have made sense if this makes sense to you. For an example, for an example, guys, if I'm going to comment this out, okay, let's just try to again have some uh, fun over here. Let's say we have a word stream over here. Now, this word stream is giving you a stream of strings, okay? But what I want over here, whenever I'm calling to this word stream method over here in my app Java, I want each of the word that I'm printing. For example, this is my normal stream. I'm trying to consume each of the each of the word from the stream, okay? If I want to convert each of the word to uppercase, then what? How can I do that? I want to transform each word from the stream. To uppercase. How can I do that? Anyone? It's a stream. I want to transform the data that I have on the stream to uppercase. Yes, yes, yes. Map, map. Yeah, sure. Angshuman map. Rashmi map. Yes, yes. Can anybody explain me? Uh, we can use uh, map dot map, and we can take the word and uh, we can use the arrow button. Yes. Arrow and word dot to uppercase. Exactly. So because what will be a string? So in, from the word stream, every stream will come, every word will come one by one. Okay. So what words are what type of data? String type of data. So I want to take each string that is coming on the stream and I want to convert it to uppercase. 
So to have a transformation from the small letter to capital letter, I can use a map. Okay, map is used for transformation. And here, the map, here I'm gonna take a word which is coming on the stream pipeline and I'm gonna say word dot to uppercase. Simple, right? Let's just see whether these things are getting converted to the uppercase. Run this, working good, right? Everything has been converted to uppercase, okay. Now what stream is returning what? A stream of strings, some data it is returning. Now, let's just try to do the same thing with the reactive stream. Can we do that? Okay, we don't know what it is, <laughs> okay? But just because we know how the Java streams works, okay? Let's just try to apply some of our fundamental. Okay, this word stream reactive is getting me or publishing me some kind of data over here, right? So now what I want, if I'm gonna go back here, I want each of the word which is coming from this method, okay? I want to use a map method. Do I have a map method? Yes, looks like I have. It takes a function, same like the stream API, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say word, then I can do word dot to uppercase. Something like the normal stream, okay? I'm trying to do the same thing with my reactive stream, okay? So now let's just see whether this guy is giving me the correct output. Okay, let's just run this. Okay, oh, look at that. Fawn, learning, selenium, express, all of, the, all of the things are kind of tr are transformed to the uppercase. Looks pretty similar to the stream API, isn't it? And that's the first mistake that we all do. It's not same as the stream API. There are some huge differences the way the stream API works and the way the reactive stream works, okay? That's something that we, are, we, we will be planning to catch up, okay? So as of now, I, I'm sure that, you know, the code looks, makes, uh, the code might make, make complete sense to you, even though you don't understand what is reactive stream, what is this flux it is returning over here, okay? But I'm sure that code should be making sense to you. Okay? Can you guys tell me, like, like, if you have never worked on reactive stream, whatever I'm trying to do over here, it's making sense, right? At least like the way we are getting the data. Can you just give me some inputs to me? Like, is it making sense or no? No, it's not making sense, I'm confused. Something like that, like any feedback from you guys. Uh, just just speak to me. Don't don't put me, put put things on the chat. Speak to me. Uh, is it making yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that, Vijay, right? We don't know what is this subscribe. But yeah, something should be like for each. We're consuming the data over here from this method, isn't it? So even if you are not going to look at this method, like this exact method code, even you won't be thinking like, okay, this is getting me what kind of data? It's getting, getting you a stream of data, maybe some reactive stream of blah, 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 but I can do operations like this pretty much straightforward, okay? So that's why I, I forced you guys that, okay, guys, go ahead and learn stream API because it will help you to relate things, okay? Once you understand what is the difference between the stream API and the reactive stream and all this blah, blah, blah stuff, things will make pretty much sense to you after that, okay? But um, I'm gonna come back from this right now. I'm gonna be asking you a few questions. But one thing uh, before we do anything, guys. See, um, it is going to take you a while to learn, okay? So this is a new programming model. Okay, uh, you're gonna be needing some time to catch up with these things, okay? So I will try my best not to make things complicated because this is a beginner only course. I supposed to record it by myself, but I thought to invite you guys as well. So the thing is what I want you to do, just learn, practice, learn, practice, and keep it going. We'll try to catch up with these things, you know, somehow maybe within 14, 15 days. And once it, once, it once it starts making sense to you guys, like things will be go pretty easy. But so far, I'm sure the things are easy right now. So nothing to complicate over here. Now, I want to do what? I will be, okay, let this code uh, uh, be over here, okay? I won't delete it because I might need to give you the project. So I will create a, um, 
a new uh, package and I'm going to say this um, com dot selenium express dot stream test. Um, I'm going to close all this. Okay. Like that. Uh, and over here, I'll be creating a new class. Okay. Let's say stream test class. All right. And I have a main method. Now, I have a question for you guys. Okay. So forget about everything. Let me clear out everything. I have a question for you. I'll be asking you a few questions. Let's just check our understanding how basically the stream API works. Do you guys actually know that or not? Okay. So we're going to be having some comparison with the reactive stream and the stream API. I told you guys that they both work in a different way. So let's just try to understand first how the stream API works. Okay. I'm sure that you understand how it works, but I have some questions for you. Okay. So imagine I have a stream of data. Okay. Let's say stream of, and I have a bunch of name over here. Let's say fun again, learning and let's say selenium and let's say express. There are few words over here. Okay. Now, uh, what I want to do, I want to do F4. Okay. If I have this thing, I have a question for you. What this is going to return me? This is going to return me a stream of uh, a string stream, like a stream of strings. Okay. If I'm going to print it like this, will I get, get the stream data over here printed? Yes or no? I'm going to print the stream reference right over here. Am I going to get the data? No. 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 Why? What it is going to return me here? If I'm going to run this, I'm I'm not. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. If I'm going to run this, yeah, we need to apply some termination operations. Terminal yes. operations we have to apply, right? Otherwise, the stream will not emit the data because okay. the streams are lazy. We know about this, right? Yeah. So this is going to return me a stream of strings. I'm going to apply some terminal operations like let's say for each and I'm going to consume each of the words present in the stream. I'm going to say s out word. Okay. Makes sense to me. And I am sure that this makes sense to you as well. If I'm going to run this, then I should be getting um, the data over here. Okay. So what this for each method does over here, you guys told me that the streams are lazy. We need to apply some terminal operation. The terminal operation will trigger the stream pipeline and help the stream pipeline to start processing or uh, forcing the stream API to flow its data, right? So for each is basically triggering the stream stream pipeline. Okay. Uh, because if you don't trigger the streams are lazy and it will not, you know, uh, help you are uh, processing your data. The data processing begins only once you apply some terminal operations. Makes sense to me. And I'm sure that it makes sense to you as well, because I'm saying makes sense to me because I'm sure that you are done with your preparation with the stream API. Now I have a question for you. So what do you think? The stream works as a pull model or it works as a push model? Do you understand my question first of all? Imagine how the stream API works, okay? How the, uh, can somebody tell me how the data that I have inside the stream is getting processed? Anyone? Uh, it takes each value one by one. First it takes fun. Uh -huh. uh, then uh, learning it takes selenium like one by one it takes uh -huh. and if we apply it any data takes the first one mm -hmm. it prints it takes the first one then it prints then it takes the second one then it prints and it goes like that correct so uh, what do you guys think uh, the for each is pulling the data from the stream pipeline or the stream of data that I have this pipeline is pushing the data to the for each and it's getting printed pushing. Pushing? Pushing, pushing, pushing. I told you guys already in the lesson number one, <laughs> I've shown you a diagram pulling. Okay, Ankit, when you sequence of data flow, yes, yeah, stream is a sequence of data flow. The main thing to understand here, one, one thing I want to re uh, repeat here, make sure that guys, you can only apply a terminal operation once the data that you have over here are ready. Once the stream is constructed, then only you will be able to consume it. Okay. 
You cannot add data um, after the stream got created. There are some other things we'll dis uh, discuss, but imagine like we have a set of data over here and once it's constructed, we're trying to apply this for each and some of you are saying for each is pulling the data from the stream pipeline and some of you are telling the, uh, the stream is pushing the data to the for each. Let's just see an animation and I'm sure that you have seen that before with my stream API sessions. So let me uh, try to go to my keynote. So yeah, we have a stream of method and imagine these are the data that I have inside my stream. The stream of method is gonna set up a pipeline where these words will be processed one by one in the stream pipeline. You guys know about it. But the data processing will be begin when we apply some terminal operations like for each, that also you guys know. Now the for each is going to trigger the stream pipeline. It's just like it is going to asking for the data to the stream. So it's a, it's a pull. It's going to pull the data from the stream pipeline. That, okay, it's gonna ask for the data. The stream have the first data over here in the pipeline and then process it to the for, for each. Imagine the for each is just taking and printing it to your console, okay? And now the, uh, the for each is going to again ask the stream. It's like, it's uh, just pulling the data one by one that, okay, do you have any more data? The stream is say, okay, here you go. You have one more world, it goes to the for each, then we print it, okay? Again, the for each is going to, for each is going to ask to the stream uh, that, okay, do you have any more data? We have the more data. This keeps flowing like this. Again, we're gonna ask next data, the for each is gonna print it to the console, okay? So it's just like the for each is just like pulling the data from the pipeline, okay? So the terminal operation here, we, let's say we're just trying to access the data and trying to print it. So every time we're gonna be going up in the stream, okay? And to this upstream, we're gonna be asking for the data and we'll be printing it, okay? If your understanding is clear, and I'm sure that you know some of you might have guessed it wrong, but this diagram should have make, made sense to you. I also have explained the same diagram previously in your prerequisite series on stream, okay? Now I have a question, okay? Let's just check our fundamental with this um, concept. And this will also, uh, if you have any confusion for any questions for me, after this example, this will be clear, okay? Let me set off something here. Uh, this is a very popular interview question as well. And you might see this reference and example in some of the books as well. Maybe um, some cracking the coding interviews uh, book. Maybe if you are following, you might get uh, not the cracking the coding interview. Uh, that is another popular interview series book for Java developers, yeah. Or anyhow, you know, maybe I'm gonna give you some example here. Uh, imagine I have a stream and I have off, okay? And I'm gonna take some value over here. Okay, this is a question for you guys. Uh, we can be right or wrong, just look at the question first, okay? So we have a stream of data and let's say I'm gonna do for each and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take each of the number I'm trying to print it over here. Okay, all good. So I'll be able to print all the number to my console, okay? So right now, I'm gonna have a pick over here. Pick is an intermediate operation. I told you guys already, it's also going to return you a stream. Basically helps you in debugging, but that's fine. I'm gonna use it something like this right over here and I'm gonna print something. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the number and I'm gonna print the number again over here, okay? So if I'm gonna do that, so first one will be processed in the stream pipeline, will be printed over here. And then again, for each is going to print the number here as well. So every number will be printed twice over here on your console, okay? There you go, first pick is printing, then for each is printing. Pick is printing, then for each is printing. Every number is going one by one in your stream pipeline, makes sense. Next thing, um, Let's just try to have one more peak over here. Okay, now it's going to print uh, this one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 something like that, I feel. Okay, there you go, one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. So here it is printing one, then here it is printing one, then here it is printing one. Going to the next, uh, here it is printing two, here it is printing two, here it is printing two. Again, Forrest is asking data, the three, 
Here it is printing 333. Three, three. Then 46 is again asking data and is continuous. I hope you understand. Now let's just do one thing here uh, to make sure which peak is printing it. I'm gonna concatenate with some value, let's say A, and here with some value, let's say B, okay? This is not reactive stream, guys. Uh, just giving you a simple example, okay? And you can practice this example. So now it is going to print like A1, B1, C1, something like that, A1, B1, C1, then again for two, A2, B2, C2, then A3, B3, C3, something like that. Okay, let's just make sure uh, to remove this print LN so that I'll get everything like for one loop, let's say one is coming. Now I want to print, um, let's remove this. I want to print A1, B1 and C1. Then again, the next iteration, two will come. It will A2, B2, C2. Again, the next iteration, three, then it will be A3, B3, C3, something like that I want to print. Let's just run this. Whether this, oh, as everything is printing in the same line, A1, B1, C1. A2, B2, C2, then A3, B3, C3. But every time we have a new iteration, maybe I'm gonna give a new line over here, okay? So right now it will print like A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, uh, A3, B3, C3, something till A9, B9, C9, okay? Guys, this output and this code make sense to you? Confirm me once, yes, no? Just confirm me, making sense, yes? And, uh, yeah, should be make should be make sense, right? Okay, the peak is an intermediate operation or is it a terminal operation? Anyone? Intermediate. Intermediate, right? So every intermediate operation gives you what? Returns you what? Stream. 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 This returns a stream. This returns a stream. But here we are consuming that stream. Okay. But I all I told you one thing: that the for each is going to ask for data, it's going to pull the data from the stream. But here, hold on, the previous example that I've given you here, all right, here, the for each was pulling the data from the stream, from the stream that it is connected to, by the way. So right now, here, the for each is going to ask, so see, if I'm gonna do a semicolon here, semicolon here, semicolon here, you know what it is going to return, right? This is going to return an integer stream for an example. Then if this peak, okay, this is going to return a stream object again. Okay, something like this, let's say peak uh, one. Okay, and every intermediate operation will return a stream object. I told you if I'm gonna handle the return type here, this is going to return a stream object again, something like this. And from this peak, we are actually doing the for each. Okay, this makes sense, right? We are basically consuming the data over here. If I'm gonna run this, same output. I just wanted to show you that, like uh, the the for each is consuming from this peak two. The peak two is a is a stream which is returned by this peak method because it's an intermediate operation. This is this is applied over this peak one, okay? And this peak one we got when we applied a peak operation over this integer stream that we have created over here, okay? So we can connect them all, like just make sure that this peak are returning a stream of integer because these are some intermediate operation. But we can connect them, okay? That's why we have used this, um, this directly, something like this, okay? Dot peak, dot peak again, and dot for each directly, okay? Why I'm telling you all this? It will all make sense. So one second. Now I have a question. Now this for each, it is connected to whom? To this pick. So what do you think? This for each will ask data to this stream, whatever this off method will return, or the for each will ask data to this pick, whatever the stream this pick is going to return. And this pick, again gonna ask data to this stream, whatever this stream is going to return. And this pick will ask data to this, whatever this is going to return. Now let's say if it is the first call, then this one will be returned to this peak. It will be print the A1. Then this peak was asking the data to this peak previously. So data will be returned to here. Uh, like the data will be propagated down. It will be B2. And the for each asks to this peak. Now it will be C1. So you are getting A1, B1, C1. Now the for each again will ask to the peak. Do you have any more data in the stream? Okay. And the peak will say, okay. 
Um, I don't have the data right now. Let me ask to the upstream. The upstream is who? This. This is also returning a stream. This will ask to this. This will have any more data? Yes, we have data too. So it will come down. It will come downstream. It will be A2 first. Again comes down B2. Then again comes down C2. That's what we get. A2, B2, C2. Again, for is going to ask the data to the upstream, to the pick. This is going to ask data to here. This is going to ask data to here. And the data will come over here and it will go downstream. Okay. This makes sense, right? Guys, this analogy makes sense. I'm going to ask you a question right now. Can you confirm me once? Yes? yes no? Sir. Okay. Yes, okay. Now. Okay. Now. Simple, huh? Now I have a question. Let's say, what will be the output? Tell me. Think and tell me. Yes. What do you think? You can discuss with me as well. It only prints like four, uh, one, two, three, four, like A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2. Uh, yeah, Swati. So it will be print uh, A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2, A3, B3, C3, A4, B4, C4. Because yes, yes. it is going to be four items, it will emit. So one yes. first it will emit A1, B1, C1, then two, a2, B2, C2, then 3, then 4, right? Then yes. after that, what will happen? After that, like, uh, yeah. Then 5 uh, five will come and it will not print or like? It will not print. It will not print. So we, since it is limiting, we are limiting there. Mm -hmm. So it stopped there. That is the reason like it is a, uh, like it is kind of a stream, right? It is flowing like in a belt kind of thing. Correct. So, I'm absolutely yeah. agreeing to, to your answer, Swati. Uh, that yeah. after four, this limit will not emit value, right? That's why it will not, it will not be printing. But yes. uh, my question is, up, let's say one will come, okay? So limit is four, so four value it will emit. One will come, so it goes over here, A1, B1, C1. Comes again, uh, second value, A2, B2, C2. Third value, A3, B3, C3. Fourth value, A4, okay, the limit is four. Still, I can emit, the limit will emit the data to the pick, A4. Yeah before right so i'm gonna run this and your answer is correct okay nothing fancy we got the result over here now my question is after after this uh, a4 the limit will be applied to these values as well or it will not be applied like this value again will pro, uh, will be flowing in the belt not flowing not flowing why why then you are saying the stream will be um, you know, exited after the limit will emit four items. Is that true? Yes. Why? Yes, yes. I want because to hear. Like, uh, I want to hear that uh, region. Why? Yeah, because it, it is a, like uh, it's kind of short circuiting. Exactly. This is that is what I want to hear. Limit is a short circuiting um, uh, intermediate operation. Intermediate means it, this is going to return you a stream object only. But it is a short circuiting stateful intermediate operation okay that means once the limit will uh, will do its job after that it will just short circuit the entire stream pipeline that means this data will not flow for one last time i'm gonna tell you this just see how the pull model of stream api works so the for each is going to so in the first run what will happen the for each is going to pull the data uh, from the peak. The peak is going to ask to the upstream, which is limit. The limit doesn't have the data, it's going to ask to the upstream, this peak. This peak also returns a stream, but it's going to ask to the upstream right now, to this stream. Now one comes in the belt, here, here you go, A1, then the limit will emit the data, because the limit has not been reached yet, it's the first element, it can emit four elements. So first data it emits, now it's B1, C1. Okay, that's, there you go. You have A1, B1, C1. Then the for each, again, ask the data to the pick. Ask the pick, ask the data to the limit. Limit goes upstream, ask, ask the data to the pick. Now two comes, right? Now it is A2. Uh, the limit can emit the data because it's a second item. B2, C2. There you go. A2, B2, C2. Like that, the third iteration goes A3, B3, C3. Then like that, the fourth iteration goes A4, B4, C4. On the fifth item, or like iteration, when the 4H is asking the data to the pick, okay, 
the pick is asking the data to the limit. Okay. Now the limit is saying, oh, okay, I have emitted the data that I wanted to emit, and I'm a short circuiting operation. That means I will I'll be exiting the stream pipeline. Okay. You no need to further processing the data five, six, seven, eight, nine because these are useless and time consuming computation, and it's a short circuiting um, you know um, operation. So it will straight away short circuit the element. Some people think like, okay, if you're gonna think in the other way. Okay, if you wanna think in the other way, like this is pushing the data, you will think like this. First one will come, okay, then it will go. One, here one, here one. Like that after fourth iteration, the short circuiting will be done over here. That means this A5 will be printed. Only A5 will be printed after this line. But this will not happen because it is going from here, from here to here, here to here, here to here. I hope that makes sense. Now apply the same analogy and tell me, uh, let's say if I'm gonna write, uh, let's say five here, okay? Now what will be the output? Think. You already know stream. I'm just uh, just making sure that your uh, this your brain works a little bit with this um, conceptual th things, and you understand the four is asking the data to the upstream. This stream asking the data to the upstream. This stream asking the data to the upstream. Again, it goes over here. Then data is flowing downstream. Okay, so one, three, five, mm -hmm. um, a six b six c six. Okay, the, is this the output, guys? Ask me. Uh, sorry, uh, answer me. So everything else will be printing except five. Okay, so you are saying. A6, um, B6, C6, yes. then A7, B7, C7, then continued, right? Okay, can you put that on the chat? Can you put that on the chat, please? Oh, otherwise, help me write. Hello, just, just one of you start helping me. I'll just write the answer, then we'll try to analyze what will happen. Anyone want to answer this? Anyone? Yeah, it, it's like six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, yeah, six, yeah, the first okay. five elements will be skipped and six, seven, eight, nine will be. Okay, it'll be like A6. Then uh, six will come over here. The five, five, five elements will be skipped. Then six will come. So it'll be uh, six, then B6, C6. Okay, something like this. Okay, then you are saying again, control C, put it over here. It will be S7, B7, C7, and this continued, isn't it? So all of you agree with this answer, or you have? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you want to think? I have already given you the answer while explaining the last example. Let's just run this. Is it running? Yeah. This is the output. <laughs> Just wanting you to understand stream works in a pool best uh, way. Okay. So you are completely correct. The skip will first skipping the, uh, the first five elements. And then it will be emitting everything. And there you go. You are you are absolutely correct. But what you missed is like how stream works again. It works from backwards and the way it em emits the data. Okay. Let's just try to understand what is happening over here. Okay. Guys, you guys already know stream. Okay. Uh, no need to self-doubt yourself. I'm just giving you some puzzling question. In the first, um, first time when I might have seen this a few years ago, I might have also given wrong answer. So nothing to get, uh, you know, feel bad about your understanding or something. Let's just try to see this um, in a puzzle one more time. Okay, like the way it works. Okay, the for each is a terminal operation is triggering the stream, asking the data to the upstream, pick. Then it asks the data to, to skip. And by the way, skip is not um, a short circuiting operation. It's just a stateful Intermediate operation is stateful, means it remembers the data that it processes. For an example, 
it has to skip the first five data. So it will consume all the data, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. And after the fifth element only, it has to emit. So it need to remember the data that it is passing through. So uh, it will help the skip method in order to process the data, right? That's why it is a stateful operation. It remembers the data, what it processes, okay? Now let's just understand, but it's not a source or cutting operation, by the way. Okay, the for each is asking the data to the pick. The pick is asking the data to the skip. The skip is the intermediate operation, correct? It returns a stream only. It need to emit the data, okay? So who will emit the data to this pick? The skip will emit the data to this pick, okay? Now, first we'll go in this way, right? This is asking this, this pick is asking skip. Now skip is asking the data to pick. Okay, then the pick stream is asking the data over here. Okay, so now pick gets the data, A1, this gives it to the skip. And that's, there you go, you got A1 first. Now the skip cannot downstream that data. The, the skip cannot pass the data to this pick, isn't it? Because it has to skip the first five elements. So it cannot emit the data to the downstream who's asking the skip that, okay, get me the data. Isn't it? So again, skip does what? Okay, this is the first element. I have to skip four more. Again, it is asking to this pick. Okay. Again, this pick asking to this upstream. We get two sprints A2 here. And this goes to skip. Okay. Again, skip cannot emit that, right? Because it has to skip the first five elements, right? Then again, it goes to the upstream. Okay, to this pick. The pick will get three. And then gives it to the skip back. Okay, you can see A3, like that it goes A4, like that it goes A5, right? Now when the skip asks for the sixth element, the pick is getting the sixth element, printing A6, over here you can see it's printing A6, and after that, after that the skip can emit the data right now to the downstream, because it has skipped the first five elements. Now it goes to here, okay? Now B6, here we go, B6, and again the for each, uh, C6, okay, uh, and here it goes C6, right, C plus 6 is coming, right, and again, it goes to the pick, as pick asks the data to skip, skip asks the data to the pick, and pick asks the data over here, 7 is coming, now 7 will be A7, there you go, A7, now skip will no longer will be skipping the data, it will be keep on giving it to the downstream, now 7 will be downstream over here, now B7, here you go, B7, and then it again downstream to the uh, terminal for each. It goes C7, here you go, C7. And now it's continued, okay? So what do you need to understand? Every stream that you have over here, not only the terminal operation, the terminal operation just triggers the stream. But this for each, asking the data to the pick, okay? The stream which is, oh, which is where it is connected. Now this pick asks the data again to the upstream. Then this guy again asks the data to the stream which is behind or which is up over here, okay, which is this pick. And this is again asking the data to the here, okay. So what you understand, what you need to understand that it is just pulling the data from the upstream, okay. Make sense, guys? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay. So if you don't print the, print the line and the name, then obviously first five elements get skipped, right? Uh, if we are going to print line number 9, Aditi? Uh, line, 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 if we comment it, then... Uh, which line, which line, which line, uh, Aditi? Above that skip line. Above the, yeah. this, this pick, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, obviously. We are printing, that's why we are getting... Ex exactly, line. exactly, exactly. Oh. Correct. And here we have uh, commented out this uh, new line. Put a new line over here. And this will just work as you expect, right? I hope you understand that. Okay, so uh, there you go. Okay, pull best model. That's what I wanted to prove. Okay, nothing else. You can go ahead, you can practice this, you can take some time to understand. That's fine. Okay, just understand that it is pulling the data. Fine. Okay, now let's just close this. Let's just go back to our uh, application that we have uh, created on Reactive Stream. Okay. So here, the way it works is different, I told, because the reactive stream basically works in a push-based model, okay? Something like this. You have a publisher, 
you have a subscriber. Think like the method that you have is publishing the data. If the method that I have over here in the IntelliJ, this is my reactive stream utils, right? Here I have created a method. Here, this is emitting the data, the flux dot just. And this flux in the reactive stream, what we call a publisher, okay? The publisher job is it is going to publish the data, right? And here in the app class, if you're gonna see our previous code that we have written here, here, this is going to return the data. This is going to work as a publisher, which is going to publishing the data. I remove this map. Look at the subscriber. The subscriber is connected with that publisher. Then uh, the publisher, whatever data it is pushing to the subscriber, the subscriber is just printing, okay? It is the subscribe is not pulling the data from the react uh, from the publisher. The subscribe is not pulling the data from the flux. The flux being a publisher is going to push the data to the subscriber. The way it works is just like this. Imagine we have a publisher subscriber model. Okay, we have a publisher, we have a subscriber. The subscriber asks the data to the publisher that okay, give me data. I'm subscribing to you. When you use that subscribe method, then only the subscriber asks the data to the publisher. Okay, if you're not going to subscribe, no data will flow over here, just like your stream API. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, I think you can see that right now. Just like your stream API, if you are not going to do this, right? Um, and if whatever it is going to return, okay, whatever, that method is returning a, a flux of string, if it's just going to do S out and string flux, okay, nothing will happen, just like your stream API. Because if you're gonna run this, Okay, you can see it's just a flux array. It's not printing the data. Because just like your stream, this is also lazy. Uh, once you subscribe, like stream flux, okay, this is gives you a publisher, which will give you the data. Here you have to subscribe. I'm gonna ask for the data that, okay, I'm gonna, um, you know, consume each word and print it over here, okay? And then only the things will work. If I'm gonna run this, then you're gonna be seeing the data over here, okay, right over here, okay? So the subscriber is basically subscribing to the string flux. The string flux is not only uh, the, like this is the flux of string, what I call a publisher over here, okay? So the subscriber is basically subscribing to the publisher for the data and asking publisher the data, and that's how you are printing the data over here, okay? So we have the publisher, we have the subscriber, okay? The subscriber subscribes to the publisher when you use the subscribe method, okay? And asking that, okay, give me data. The publisher is saying, okay, whenever the data is going to be available, I'm gonna give you the data. But I don't have the data right away. I might have, if I have, I'm gonna give you that. But here, unlike stream, the publisher will be keep on pushing the data to the subscriber whenever it has the data available. For an example, now it has a data available called hello, okay? Now it's gonna push that data to the subscriber and notify the subscriber. And the subscriber is gonna make sure it is gonna react to the data that the publisher is pushing. It is gonna be reactive to whatever the publisher is pushing and gonna say, okay, I have a consumer which is gonna consume that data. Okay, oh sorry, bad animation. Okay, so it's gonna immediately push the data by the way. Um, I have done some bad animation over here. I'll make sure that I'm gonna give you the good good one. So basically what, what's supposed to happen over here uh, is something like that. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, um, oh, I think I messed it up with the animation, but okay, that's okay. So the moment, the so this data will not be there with the publisher. You can think like that, okay? Something like this. Once the data arrives in the publisher, the publisher is going to push the data like this to the subscriber, okay? And the, that data will be pushed to the subscriber like this, okay? And let's say there is a, another data arrives in the publisher, let's say world, okay? Now, again, once the data arrives in the publisher, 
the publisher is going to push the data to the subscriber like this. Okay, it's going to notify the subscriber that, hey, I have some data available. The subscriber is going to consume the data. Like that, um, if you're going to uh, see one more thing, let's say I have some more data available in the publisher right now, let's say fun. Once it is available, the publisher is going to notify the subscriber and it's going to push the data to the subscriber, something like this. Okay, it's going to push the data to the subscriber that, okay, I have some new data. Do you want, you told me that I should be giving you the data. You have subscribed to me. So whenever I have the data available, I'm going to pushing it to you. Okay. So it works as a push best way. The publisher is going to keep pushing the data to the subscriber. Once the publisher has some data like stream, it is not pulling the data from the source here. The source itself is pushing the data to whoever subscribes it. Okay, so it works as a pushed best model when it comes to reactive stream. Okay, so that's one way you can differentiate your Java stream with reactive stream, the way they works, but a lot of more things to come over here. If you don't believe me, I'm gonna show you something. So um, imagine I'm right now subscribed to this stream over here, watch stream. And this, this is coming from which uh, class? Reactive Stream Utils, okay? And I'm subscribing to here, okay? And I'm gonna, uh, whenever there will be data available in this uh, what stream reactive, it's gonna keep pushing the data to my subscribe and subscribe will consume it and put it on the console. Let's say, I just want to show you a scenario. Let's just go to this what stream. Let's say, uh, I just want to show you a scenario like this flux, treat it like a publisher, which is going to keep publishing the data. It is publishing all this data right now. And it is all publishing right away. That's why whenever we run this application right away, the subscriber consumes all the data and you can see that on the console. But in real life, if you're going to go to here, the data might not be available at once. It will come gradually. For an example, uh, can I do something over here? Let's say delay elements, I'm going to delay all these elements uh, by, let's say, five seconds or something. Let's say duration of millis, and I'm going to give uh, 2000 millisecond, okay, over here. Now, in every two seconds only, the data will be emitted from the uh, publisher. Treat this flux as a publisher, which will be publishing the data, okay? Now, come to the app of Java. Imagine this is going to have the publisher, which is going to keep publishing the data in every two seconds. We're saying two seconds, but you think like you don't know when the data will be available. Now the subscriber, whenever the data will be available, it will react to that. Guys, everyone be on mute. The subscriber will be react to that whenever the data will be published by the subscriber. No, sorry, by the publisher, okay? The subscriber will be notified by the publisher, hey, one data I have pushed, you want that? The subscriber will say, okay, I'll consume it and I'll put it on the console. Let's just see that right now, if you're gonna, if you're gonna run this, you're gonna see some crazy behavior. If you wanna run this, look at that. Your program exited. Okay, you don't even consume one data because whenever you run this, the main thread starts. It's, uh, it's going to execute this line. It gets nothing. And um, right now, you know, it's just end of the line. And you can see it's exited with this uh, exit code zero. That means it's a, it successfully exited my program. But I want the data from my publisher, right? The subscriber, is looking for the data from the publisher and the publisher will be keep on pushing the data in every uh, 2000 millisecond, in every two seconds, okay? So for that, I can make sure this reactive stream, this program, once I run this, this should not be exit, right? So I should be make this program hold for, for a little bit. Maybe I can use a scanner or something. Uh, and uh, using the scanner, uh, let's say system dot in. Okay, this is how we create a scanner, right? In Java, unreachable statement, more action. Beautiful written. Ha 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 ha. You are returning. Sorry. You are oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Correct, correct, correct. I supposed to write the scanner over here. The input will be system dot in. So system.in, so this is my main application where I'm basically uh, subscribe. This is, imagine this is my subscriber application where it subscribes 
to the publisher. The publisher will be keep on emitting the data. So I'm just creating a scanner to hold it a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna say sc dot next line. And I'm gonna just say next line means as long, once you give the input only, then only this will be closed, right? So I'm gonna say um, s out, let's say press any key to exit the program, okay? So here, this next line will hold the program as, as long as you are not entering any key, okay? After that, this line will be, once you enter the key, this line will be invoked, and I'm not actually, uh, you know, um, getting the input, whatever you are entering, so the program will go to the next line and will be terminated, right? I want the program to be hold over here. Let's just run this, okay? Now you're gonna see the behavior is different right now. I'm holding it right now. The program is uh, not terminating as you can see. Now you can see in every two seconds, the publisher is publishing the element and the subscriber is consuming the element. And now my program is active. You can see it is not closed yet. So. So it's gonna keep expecting elements from the publisher that will be coming. The elements might come in a reactive fashion. Whenever the publisher is gonna push the element to the subscriber, the subscriber is gonna to react to that element and gonna consume it. It works in that model. This works in push model. The publisher will be pushing the data to the subscriber, okay? And once you hit any key over here, enter. This will like, uh, you know, uh, read the next, uh, the next line will read that data and we are not doing anything with that data that we're entering and it's going to the next line and it's getting terminated. Okay, this is just an example. In real life, we'll be using with a web application which will be, um, which will be deployed and will be active uh, and will be online for 24 seven. So you don't need to do all this thing in your web application, but yeah, it's just a standalone application. We are learning it. So I'm just holding the things over here. So it looks like stream API, but it actually doesn't. This works in a different approach. In your stream, this word stream that you are creating before, this will only work, you can only do all this thing once the data inside the stream, the streams are ready, right? So that's how the stream works. Once the stream is constructed, the stream is actually not a data publisher. This is, this is not a data source. Uh, the stream is just gonna hold some data and gonna help you to process that. This off method I have just used, but mostly we create stream out of an array or out of uh, some uh, list or blah, 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 right? So the stream just help us to create a kind of channel where we can process massive amount of data, okay? Uh, but this is not a publisher kind of thing, okay? But here in the reactive, th this works in a different way, okay? Hope this makes sense. That's it for today's lesson. I'll see you guys tomorrow and we're gonna be doing some more hands-on. I don't think, you know, I should be taking any questions. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me, but I don't think, you know, it will be relevant right now to, uh, to uh, discuss any questions because it's just going to confuse. Um, uh, we should not be discussing about the reactive right now. Once we have around two, three sessions, we'll, ha we'll have a open platform to discuss a lot of different things because, you know, uh, the things will actually start making sense. Once it start to make sense, you know, we can discuss about it. But yeah, whatever we have discussed made sense a little bit, right? I just emphasized with this pull, push pull model. Uh, so you're okay with it, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Didn't confuse you? Or I did confuse you? Yeah, no, Okay. All right, then. Okay, then. All good, huh? Arbaj, you are okay? Yeah, I will mean, actually wonder huh. about this reactive. Huh. I could see you are emphasizing on the publisher subscriber model. Huh, huh, huh. We can have multiple subscribers contrast yeah. to a normal stream? Yeah, no. Thank you for raising that question, Arbaj. So, we, we are emphasizing this publisher subscriber model. So, it's a very nice question. You can see that. Okay, here is a question for you. Okay, we have a stream over here called what stream? Okay, so we are consuming the stream over here. Now again, um, let's just do one thing. Again, I'm trying to consume the data over here. So what do you guys think? This will work? 
exception will get. Why? We cannot uh, reopen a stream which is already consumed. Right? Correct. Okay, stream up. Okay, and I want to do for each. Okay, I want to consume each word that I have in the stream. Okay, so imagine this for each I'm applying over a stream. Let me just handle the stream like this. Okay, let's just stream uh, of string of streams, and I'm gonna just do the for each. Okay, this should get me the data. Now I'm gonna repeat that statement one more time. Okay, like this. And if I'm gonna run this. Oh, my system also stuck. Okay, we're getting an exception. The stream has already been operated open and closed, right? So once we consume a stream, we cannot operate over the same stream again, right? And we have already spoke about it in our stream API course as well. So you have to comment this line out because this string is already consumed over here. So you cannot consume the data from the stream which is already consumed, okay? But as we are discussing about the publisher subscriber model, okay, let's say I have a flux, which is a publisher, which is going to help me to publish data. Let's say flux of string, let's say flux of string, okay, imagine it's like a stream of strings, and I'm going to use the flux, which is a publisher, and I'm going to use a method just to create some data for my publisher. Imagine I have some data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or something, okay? Require type string, okay. Uh, let's just say it integer, okay? Now, can I do flux of integer? Let me just rename this, okay? Can I just do flux of integer dot for each? Uh, sorry, subscribe, this is a publisher. I'll be subscribing, I'm gonna say, number and I'm going to print each number system dot out dot print ln guys bear with me my system got extremely slow uh, so anyhow we're end of the day so not a problem okay so I'm going to print the number over here okay so my uh, I'm subscribing to this flux of integer and I'm 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 basically printing all the numbers over here if I'm going to run this Okay, I'm gonna get all the numbers right over here. Now, can I do this one more time? Okay, now do you think this will work or this will give me an exception? What do you think? I think what's... it works because it's a publisher subscriber model. One publisher can have multiple subscriber. Uh, I'm publishing contents. I have, let's say 10 of you who watch my contents. So I have 10 publishers, uh, sorry, I have 10 subscribers, right? So this Flux is a publisher and these guys are subscribers. Now this is a subscriber connecting to this publisher. This is a subscriber connecting to this publisher. I can see this is the first subscriber subscribes and prints it to the console. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, it prints second subscriber. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So first this code executes, then this code executes. It subscribes and prints everything to the console and this subscribes and prints everything to the console to the same publisher. So one publisher can have multiple subscribers, okay? But in stream, that cannot be possible, okay? We just have seen that example, okay? Another difference and thanks so much for raising that point, okay? Uh, Abhilash, like uh -huh. it is, it is like, uh, it is going to the next publisher, next subscriber only after completion of uh, First subscriber, uh, this thing like uh, here, here, yes, but two subscribers can also, um, you know, uh, uh, like uh, works in the same time as well, right? Let's say maybe we're gonna be we're gonna be having this uh, scenario. We'll be creating this scenario, Swati. So yeah, so they can uh, act upon as a, a one uh, particular publisher in the same time. So we're gonna be talking about that thing. I haven't discussed discussed much about the publisher subscriber. We'll be coming into that. Okay. That's why I don't want to have much more, much discussion on this. Arvaj, does this mean we can have multiple subscribers? Yes, you can have multiple subscribers, Arvaj. Any other questions, guys? Okay, forget about this thing. We'll discuss anyhow. So tell me how's everything going? <laughs> if you don't have any questions. I'm seeing few people after so many days. Okay, that's fine. Even I have not conducted any live for your badge, isn't it? So, okay. All right, okay. 
that's it guys okay let's not waste time i'll see you guys again tomorrow uh, so join me tomorrow same time 7 30 and uh, we'll be having another hands-on on some uh, publisher subscribers and all these basics on reactive stream so resuming tomorrow 7 30 a.m okay bye good day we'll speak tomorrow guys yeah uh, you too uh, you too aditi good night and good day good night guys bye-bye thank you bye-bye